So the man that you see here, former U.S. Marine Daniel Penny, earlier today walking out of a police precinct in New York in handcuffs. He was just arraigned and charged with second degree manslaughter after this. You can see Penny here on a New York City subway earlier this month. He is accused of choking a homeless man to death. The man who died, his name is Jordan Neely. Witnesses say that Neely got on the subway and he was shouting, but he had not physically attacked anyone, at which point Daniel Penny put him in a chokehold and Neely died. Neely's family said he had been suffering from mental illness. Here's an attorney for the family at a news conference earlier today. Federal judge in Virginia has struck down federal laws that prevent 18 to 20 year olds from buying handguns from federally licensed gun dealers. The judge ruled that the laws are unconstitutional, that they violate the Second Amendment. He wrote in part, quote, because the statutes and regulations in question are not consistent with our nation's history and tradition, they therefore cannot stand. CNN security correspondent Josh Campbell is joining us now. Josh, break this ruling down for us. Yeah, Bree, so this is just the latest flashpoint in the debate over gun rights and public safety following the How far would you go to sell something on social media? I hope it is not even close to as far as this guy went. U.S. prosecutors say a 29-year-old California pilot intentionally crashed his plane so that he could grab a bunch of YouTube views and make some money in the process. We have aviation correspondent. Oklahoma governor is waging a war on a PBS station. Yes, the home of Sesame Street and Clifford the Big Red Dog. Why the governor says it just doesn't line up with Oklahoma values. We are following these major developing stories and many more all coming in right here to CNN News Central. Of course, this raises a lot of questions. We have attorney and legal affairs commentator Ariva Martin who is joining us on this. So you have Ariva Penny charged with second degree manslaughter here. Walk us through these charges. Yeah, essentially, Brianna, what a second degree man. Today, the Friday before Mother's Day is Military Spouse Appreciation Day. In an opinion piece for CNN.com, I have teamed up with my co-worker and fellow military spouse, Anne Claire Stapleton, who right now is on the front lines in Ukraine reporting and producing to talk about what would really make the approximately one million military spouses out there feel appreciated. And that's a job. Military spouses suffer depression level unemployment as high as 32 percent and it's not for lack of education. They are significantly more educated than average Americans. And it's not for lack of what they have to contribute. They are assets. Military family life teaches people how to fix problems without complaining and adapt to circumstances beyond their control. But unless companies prioritize hiring and retaining these workers, frequent moves, gaps in unemployment, and non-flexible work options can get in the way. When two incomes is often what it takes for a family to be financially stable, perhaps we should not be surprised by the stunning statistic that 26 percent of military families are food insecure. The Pentagon and policymakers increasingly see spouse unemployment as a threat to the readiness of the military. How does a service member do their job if they're worried their kids aren't getting enough to eat? Why stay in the military if getting out means both spouses can be employed? Since 2005, Congress has debated a tax incentive for companies that hire military spouses, and it was just introduced again because every year it has failed to pass. If you want to know more, check out our column. It is up right now on CNN.com. Boris? So American workers may have winced at going back to work in the office, but a new survey actually shows that most are pretty happy about their job. In fact, satisfaction overall is the highest that it has been since they started asking back in 1987. Vanessa Yurkevich, our CNN business and politics correspondent, is here with what is driving this euphoria. What is it? Well, 62 percent of the pandemic, we know that. And so it's really interesting to see those numbers uh, and take a deep dive into how that is playing out for them. Vanessa, thank you so much. Jim? Thank you. Now, FDA advisors are discussing an experimental gene therapy that could provide a potential breakthrough in the fight against a rare form of muscular dystrophy. The therapy targets a specific form of the disorder called Duchenne. With current treatments, affected children usually lose their ability to walk by the time that they're teenagers. CNN medical correspondent Meg Terrell is joining us now. Meg, you spoke to a family whose son underwent this therapy. Tell us more. Yeah, Brianna, this family is convinced that this ex it's amazing just to see him walking up those stairs and how it's changed over time. Meg, thank you for the report. Jim?
Daniel Penny, the former Marine accused of choking a homeless man to death on a New York City subway, turned himself into police today. Why his attorneys say he took down the man having a mental health emergency ahead. Musk has named longtime media executive Linda Yaccarino as the new CEO of Twitter. Today's announcement comes months after he promised to step back from the role. Musk tweeting, quote, I am excited. How is it going to change how people use Twitter? Oliver, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Jim?